Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, substitution, the substitution method for figuring out the uh, solution to asymptotic notation. So in this case, we're going to just assume we're given some recurrence relation. In this case, we got t of n is less than or equal to t of n minus 1 plus 1. And that's just given to us, okay? And what we're going to tr try to prove in this case is we're going to try to prove that t of n is big O of n. That is, t of n is less than or equal to c times n, all right? That's basically a direct interpretation from our definition of big O notation. And you could get this recursion, uh, this recurrence from some program that iterates through a list or something like this. Anyway, we're going to take sort of the same approach for substitution every time. In this case, we're going to say, well, let's assume that we're given the guess. We're trying to prove big O of n. So what happens? We're going to try to prove this inductively. By inductively, I mean, OK, great, I'm going to assume t of k is less than or equal to c times k for any k value smaller than n, okay? Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug, the, you take my recurrence relation that I start with, I'm going to plug in that inductive assumption, so t of n minus 1, hey, n minus 1 is less than n. I can use n minus 1 as a k value. So I know t of n minus 1 is less than or equal to c times n minus 1, and I plug that in here, right? So great, now I uh, do some algebra, and I'm left with, well, I want to prove t of n is less than or equal to c of n, right? That's what I want to get. Well, in this case, I have it, as long as c is at least 1, right? So, uh, so great, right? I get this by just canceling out my c of n on both sides. I bring the c over, c times n on both sides, bring the c over. Is that true? Yes, it's true. If c equals 1, let's say, and n is at least 1, it happens to be that n naught doesn't really matter in this case. For any positive value of n, this is going to be true, okay? So that's our warm-up. Uh, that's fine. We're going to take that same approach. Let's try it with the merge sort relationship, right? This, this relationship comes up in a bunch of different ways, this recurrence relation. We've got t of n is less than or equal to 2 t n over 2 plus n, right? And again, well, we want to prove that this is big O of n log n, right? So we want to prove there exist positive constants c and n naught such that for all sufficiently large n, at least n naught, t of n is less than or equal to c n log n, right? Same approach as before. We're going to prove it inductively. We assume that for any k less than n, t of k is less than c k log k. Now, I'm also going to assume that, you know, n is a perfect power of 2, so that whenever I divide n by 2, I get a nice even integer, and there's no problems. You know, we could, we could, um, we could be a little bit more accurate and, and not do that, but in the end, it's going to give us the same answer. Uh, we're going to try to make our analysis look as clean as possible here. Let's just assume that n is a perfect power of 2, okay? Uh, we could, in some sense, make that assumption and then clean up all the other n values later if we wanted to, but we'll just make that assumption. So here we go. We take the same approach. We start with our recurrence relation. We take this, hey, t of n over 2, k equals n over 2 is less than n. We can plug in for it. So we're going to plug in. Now we get a little bit more algebra. Well, 2 times n over 2 is just n. Log of n over 2 is log of n minus 1. We do our algebra. Now we have this, uh, great, more algebra. Is this term less than c n log n? Well, we can cancel out our c n log n term from each side. And it's true if c n is at least as large as n. Well, it's true for c equals 1. And again, it happens to be that n naught is not so important in this case. Okay? It's true for, for all n, for all positive n. We're going to be true here. Okay? So there we go. Works for merge sort. Now, notice uh, merge sort has some linear term, and I just assumed that that linear term was exactly n, right? I did that everywhere. It made the math nice and easy, and we tend to take this sort of fixed term, the non-recursive term, and, and clean it up and make it look nice. What happens if it's not nice? What if I just say, you know, I know it's a linear term, but I don't know what it is exactly. Well, if I know it's a linear term, if I know it's big O of n, um, then I can say, well, if it's big O of n, 
then uh, as long as it's big O of n, then I know that for sufficiently large values of n, that function will be less than or equal to some c1 times n. I, I don't know what c1, but just by definition, if it's big O of n, it's less than or equal to c1 times n for sufficiently large n. So in some sense, I guess this really gives us sort of a, an n naught here, an n naught for this term. All right, that's terrible looking, but uh, we'll get rid of it soon enough. Right. So what happens? Uh, all the math goes through exactly the same, except instead of filling in c equals 1 at the end, in this case, I need to plug in c equals c1. Now, uh, this, this equation here is going to hold for any n again. doesn't really matter what I pick for n naught here. But I needed some other n naught to make this assumption hold, this, this uh, inductive assumption hold. So what I'm actually going to use is I'm going to use the n naught as needed from this big O of n substitution in, and everything's still going to work out fine. Great, okay, I needed a different c, but we see even if we added this big O of n term here, really it doesn't change the order of growth of t of n. t of n is still big O of n log n, right? Now, what happens if nobody gives you the guess? What happens if you just have the recurrence and you have to guess yourself? And you go, well, I don't know what to guess. Let me try n squared, right? I'm going to try something. I don't, I don't know what the answer is. I'm going to try n squared. Let me just substitute it for n squared. Well, we're going to take the same approach. Great. I'm assuming it's n squared. Let's prove it inductively. Assume it holds for smaller values of k. I start with my recurrence relation. And then, bang, I fill in my inductive hypothesis, right? Do my simplification, and I want to know, is this true? Well, it's true if some other conditions hold. These are sort of just, just a bunch of algebra. And I can simplify this down to this. This statement, t of n will be less than or equal to c of n squared, if and only if n is at least 4 over 3c. Now, something a little bit different about that statement. It's true for any positive c that you want, as long as you make n large enough n will be bigger than 4 over 3 times any constant. I mean, if the constant is 100, then you need n to be at least uh, 4 over 300. So, so anyway, right? So, uh, we have this. Um, is that right? Seems, seems so weird. 4 over 300? 4 over 300 is like, uh, I could use 1. <sighs> yeah. If I use a big C, of course, of course. It's gonna be key. What if I use a little tiny C? There's the question. What if I use like a tiny C, like C is 100th? Well, C is 100th. This is 4 over 300ths. So that's like, whatever. It's a number less than 100 for sure, right? Uh, so n for n not equal, let's say, I don't know, 100, this is going to still work out fine. It doesn't matter what c we pick, all right? c isn't important here. Not only have we proved our upper bound that we're big O of n squared, we've actually proved we are little o of n squared. It doesn't matter what positive c you choose. The closer c is to 0, uh, the higher n naught's going to have to be, but any c will do, okay? So now, what happens if we guess too small, all right? So again, I imagine that I'm given this recurrence relation. I go, I don't know what t of n is. Maybe it's linear. Maybe I can prove t of n is big O of n. Great. Let's see if I can prove that. I'm going to inductively assume that for smaller values of, of n, for k less than n, t of k is less than or equal to c times k. Take the thing that I'm given, plug in my inductive step, do my algebra, and I'm left with something which simply is not true. c of n plus n is not less than or equal to, c times n plus n is not less than or equal to c times n. 
The only way that that would be true is if n was less than or equal to 0. And we want it to be true for n large. This is never true for n large. It's never true for n positive, all right? So what does this mean? Well, it doesn't mean anything. We proved nothing. We didn't prove that uh, we aren't big O of n. We didn't, you know, a failed proof is not the same as proving the thing you're trying to prove doesn't hold. We just didn't prove. Now, we could modify this little proof a little bit and get like a lower bound proof, and uh, we can consider doing that. But it looks like I'm going to have to go.